What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Just so you know, unfortunately YouTube has been censoring the crap out of us, so we are going to be censoring this episode, but don't worry. If you like the uncensored episodes of us just having a good time, drinking some brewskis and talking about movies or complimenting movies, go over to the FNGAcademy.com and sign up for tier three, where we will post the uncensored version of all these shows. Guys, just so you know, we have a lot going on. We have the Ruck Trainer kit that's gonna be dropping uh, next month in March. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We have the Ruck Safety Kit. Along with that, we have a padded waistband that's gonna go over the, the waist belt of all army issued rucksacks, all of them, airborne, everything. Um, it's going to be a memory foam, so that way you guys can not have all the chafing and the rubbing. Um, and we have a ton in the works for you. So go check out the mentor program. If you are interested in becoming special operations, we have Green Berets on standby to mentor you and to help you get selected. Uh, just so you guys know, nobody is doing more to help you get selected than the FNG Academy. So make sure you go check us out. Check us out online um, and check out the mentor program. Check out the store. We have new swag coming. We just signed on a new designer for shirts. So we got some really cool uh, shirts that are going to be coming out this year. So a ton of stuff in the works. We also have our new boots that are in the works are getting made right now as we speak the prototype is getting made for an ar670-1 compliant boot that you guys will be able to wear to selection in the military it's amazing it's a sick boot wide toe box not the wide toe box that everybody says they have when they just make them a wide boot but a wide toe box with the same fit of the boot itself so you still have that locked in feel in your heel but you have plenty of room for your toes display zero drop plenty of cushion um, they're just totally bad. So lots of stuff in the works, making sure you go check us out at the FNGAcademy.com. For all of you who signed up for the tier three, tier one and tier two, we just wanna thank you guys so much for your support. Every little bit helps us to give back um, to you guys so we can reinvest that money into product development. And if you guys don't know us, all we're about is product development and make sure that we're bringing the best of the best to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. And again, if you want the uncensored version, jump over to the FNGAcademy.com and go check it out. Now, let's jump into this episode of Triple Nine. This movie is stacked with talent. I mean, stacked. Yeah, there's a lot of good people in it. A lot of amazing actors that have gone on to have some amazing careers. Um, I don't know how, if you guys have seen the movie and how you feel about it. How did you feel about the movie itself? I like that Kate Winslet like went from playing whatever her name is in Titanic to this weird Russian like oligarch or criminal's wife, mm. and they're holding his kid against him, which is a pretty good plotline because there's not a lot you can do with that. Like they didn't make something up that was weird that they're holding against him, like yeah. you owe us money or something. Run the mail, like they kept his kid, cause... which he happened to be hooking up with her sister. Yeah, so it's the family ties, and I think everyone could appreciate that. Sometimes you just get stuck with the wrong family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're stuck and yeah. there's nothing you can do about it so i thought it was a pretty good, good movie too um you guys are the ones that recommended this i've never even heard of triple nine never came across my radar have you ever heard of it i heard of it i've actually seen it before but it was so long ago that i forgot uh, yeah, anything I've, about the movie i've never heard of it until you guys started commenting so if you guys have a movie that you would like us to review just know that we do these about a month out um, so just because you said it does not mean that we're ignoring you. Put it in the comments. We'll add it to the list. And then on the next trip, we'll get them filmed. And then they come out the following month. So make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and then drop the comment of which movie you'd like to see us review. And we'll make sure we get to it. But it's a cool movie. Um, it's got Daryl in it. And I don't know if you guys are fans of The Walking Dead, but Daryl's the man. He's in it for a little bit. He is. He's the he's, first one to get killed. Yeah, off, he's so. the first one to get schwacked, but he's still in it. And Daryl's the coolest dude. Yeah, absolutely. Do you watch Walking Dead? No, I've never seen one full dude, episode of The Walking Dead. I love that show. I have like a weird thing against watching stuff when it's popular at the time. So when everybody's telling you to watch it is exactly when I will not watch it. And then six months to like eight months to a year later. Once it's fizzled out. I'll be like, I guess I'll give it a shot. And I'll push play and I'll be like, bro, have you seen the show? It's amazing. And you'll be like. <laughs> you just be like, this, never mind. Like, All right, let's talking. get a couple things out of the way before we start this episode. One, we're not Rotten Tomatoes. I've said, <laughs> I've said that before. We're not going to sit there and watch the whole movie for you guys and then just 
say a couple words and move on. Some guys are like, you guys talk too much. I don't know if you know this, but beers and breakdowns is our time to relax. We're having drinks. I'm having a Jameson and ginger ale. He's having a brewski. This is our chance to have a good time and mainly over movies. So if you don't like our stories and you don't like our breakdowns and you don't like me personally, well, then I'm going to have to just recommend that you hit the skip button or the next button or just move on to someone else's channel. Here's another fun PSA. Hmm. I know you guys think it's me that's just censoring everything for the fun of it. Even though we put this disclaimer <laughs> out there, we put it in the description, but somehow you guys still skip all of that, I think. And you guys still think that I'm the one censoring things for fun because I just woke up yesterday and decided I wanted to make three hours of extra work for myself when I edit these shows. I don't want to censor the bad words. I don't want to. YouTube has forced me to do it. So stop getting mad at me. Get mad at Sean. I actually like that part that you guys get mad at him. That's funny. They just think I wake up and make these decisions by myself and you guys are somehow absolved of them. They just assume I'm all the production, so it's my fault. I'm like, we still make decisions as a yeah. crew. We still have to do all this together. So it's not just me. It's him. It's Sean. It's Sean's we, fault. We have a fan base. And for all you guys, we love you. We're not talking to you. It's those ones that like pop in and make <laughs> comments. And they're always like, who's that blonde guy? He's a kid. I don't like him. He needs to shut the <laughs> and I, I'm sitting in the back being like, it's my channel, guy, <laughs> Mick and Fly. Like, if you don't like me, then you're going to have to just stop watching the channel. I'm getting DMs of people telling me that I'm un-American for censoring the bad <laughs> words in this show. And I'm like, bro, I didn't realize that my Americanness was on trial here, but I have to censor it or else we'll, they'll demonetize us. One we'll episode I really want to do is a roast. I want you guys to roast me and either roast Kurt or Abel. And I want to read all the roasts off mm -hmm. because I've been getting some f doozies up in here. Like people are like, oh, nice dad jeans. What do you got? Some like <laughs> you, you got some Velcro Nikes underneath there. And I'm like, gosh, damn, like I can't do anything. Right. I feel like being you are pretty much fair game, but I don't know what they're going to say about Kurt. Kurt's usually pretty everyone, well put together. Everyone likes Kurt. I know. If him. There's not one person that says they don't like Kurt. It's yeah. just either they don't like me in the show or they don't like you in the show, which is hilarious because yeah. it's like you started this entire thing. But then Kurt's always just skating by it unscathed. Like nobody cares. Yeah, Kurt's just everyone's bro. He's I know. The, the people's champ. Like, you guys should just get rid of everything and Kurt should just do this with someone else, <laughs> someone cool. So, all right, guys, let's jump into the show, Triple, Triple Nine, Nine, and uh, see what we think. We'll talk about some scenes and take it from there. Daryl. Come on, I'll just Alright, so there's two things in here that struck me as as positive. So one I don't know if you guys recall when we did the episode of The Town, mm -hmm. but in The Town, when they went in and robbed the banks, they spoke with their Southie accents, Right. which I thought that was so idiotic because it's like, dude, anyone's going to immediately identify the accent and be like, listen, this is like 10 square blocks that these douchebags are from. So you clam chatter eat. Yeah. So I can hear like, you a mile away. Come on, bro. It's like, I know where you're from. I could probably pick out which street you grew up on with that thick of an accent. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was really interesting and really well thought out that instantly they go in and start speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's a good Spanish accent or whatever. The point is they're disguising their voices. So it's just even less information that you have to go off on the bad sure. guys. And then also, I really like that they just did research on the bank manager and pulled up his house. They pulled up his family, all stuff you can get up, get on Facebook, Instagram. Right. It's like just common stuff. Yeah. Most people are not aware about what they post. So you, you think about just like a PSA for you guys, think about things that you post on Instagram. You're just walking down the street talking. Well, did you ever check to see if there was a road sign behind you? You could pause that video and someone could see a, an intersection, you know, signs mm -hmm. and know exactly where you live. All they need to know is the state and then they could start narrowing you in and finding out where you live. 
So it's really, really important what you post online and what you are aware that if someone really wanted to find out information about you, how easy it is based on what you post online. There's a girl, um, she's Asian, and I don't know what country she was in, what Asian country she was in, but she was a huge influencer. And she took a picture and somebody who was like obsessed with her found her address by the reflection in her eyeball in the picture that Damn. showed a building that wasn't even where she lived, but it was enough for him to go off of to eventually find her. That's insane. And that's the picture that he got her from. So even then, like it's You got to be super careful. Every time we post anything, my wife, me, we always, before we post it, we do a scan, we zoom in, we check for street signs, we check for... Um, uh, vehicles, license plates, that's another one. Never post your license plate. I understand that you have to be a police officer to search license plates, but how many ex-police officers are out there? Mm -hmm. How many friends of police officers are out there to where they can call one of their friends and be like, hey, man, can you run this plate for me? And then be like, yeah, for what? Oh, they were creeping by my house and try to make it some justifiable reason. Yeah. The officer runs that plate, and now they have – all the information. The officer could be like, yeah, it comes back to some Joe Schmo. And they'd be like, oh, never mind. It's nothing. Well, in reality, you just gave them a full first and last name mm -hmm. or they can get the address off that. So you really got to be careful about what you post online. When I was in SEER school, I showed up because like a year before, before I even joined Special Forces on my first deployment in Afghanistan, I did a uh, uh, message home to my wife. Mm -hmm. It was like a greeting thing. It's still probably on the internet. It was like, hey, I'm Sergeant Rogers, 173rd. Just want to say happy, Merry Christmas to my wife and my daughter. You know, Merry Christmas. They told me they were just going to send that to our, our families. They didn't tell me they were posting that online. Wow. So they posted that greeting online while I was deployed. <laughs> I never knew about it. I went to SEER school and then... In the buildup of SEER school, I had to make up a story of why I was there and, and create a backstory and all this stuff. I never knew that they'd be checking online. So as soon as I show up to the the um, camp in SEER school, where it was like the after survival phase, you go to uh, your captivity camp. Uh -huh. And there's a f picture of me on the wall. And I was like, oh, f gnarly, man. Dude, there's a picture of me on the wall in uniform with my f unit badge on it. So all my backstory, luckily, I just happened to pick a backstory that I could mold into the information they already had. Mm -hmm. But it's like, dude, if that was a real life situation, I would have screwed myself. Yeah. So that's crazy. Be really careful about what you guys post online is what I'm getting at. What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out and if you want to go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military, from Special Forces, was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point, and he's a great dude. He could do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program. But I highly recommend you get a custom plan. Use code word BUCK, and he'll hook you up. So we've watched a couple movies now. I think, uh, what was the other one we watched? It was the one with 50 Cent where they exploded the um, ammonia Den inside Thieves. the vehicle. Den of Thieves. So in Den of Thieves, they had ammonia and they exploded the ammonia charges in the vehicle to get rid of evidence. Mm -hmm. And this one, they use a gas can with the charge to get rid of evidence. If I had to choose... I guess it's mission dependent because then you want to determine as to whether or not you want a vehicle on fire or if you are more doing like a surreptitious, um, syrup delicious, syrup delicious, uh, you know, getting rid of the evidence, you want to be more uh, surreptitious. So then you would want to use the ammonia. Mm -hmm. But if you don't care if it's like a big ball of fire, then I think gas is probably more likely going to actually kill all the evidence. Right. 
because I mean the things your car's going up in flames. Right. But if you just want to park it in a parking garage and then have it sit there for two weeks with nobody finding it, you know, doing an, a, a tiny ammonia bomb is probably the better way to go. Okay. But they just went full out gas and now the things burn into the ground. And likely their their plan was to drive it somewhere and burn it anyway. And burn it anyway. Yeah. So it's just you know, tactics. That is the interesting thing about tactics. You always have to think, what's the plan? You can't just say, this is the best idea mm-hmm. because this is the best idea in one scenario, but maybe not in the other scenario. Right. Another instance in here reminded me of when I was a cop. So the guy stood in front of the vehicle and was like, stop the car. And it's like, you never stand in front of a vehicle because right. obviously they could just punch it and run your ass over. Yeah. You might get a shot off, but you're still going to get hit. You're still going to get hit by a car. So one instance, I was with my training officer, and it was actually funny because it was like, hey, we got a guy sleeping in the car with a gun in in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't his car. He broke into a garage, broke into the car, and passed out with the gun in the passenger seat. Oh, wow. We were way down south, and my training officer goes, how much you want to bet we could get beef, even though it's a gun call, we could be the first on scene? I was like, there's no way. We're like... 20 minutes to get to that scene because I'm rare. I want to go. Like, right. this is a gun call. I want to go. And he goes, It was uh, day shift. Okay. And so he knew the day shifters officer's mentality was stay away from guns. You know? Oh. Because a lot of them were retiring soon. They didn't want to get <laughs> involved. Get and so he looks at me and no joke, it's not even our area by a long shot. We're on the south end of Denver. He was on the north end of our district. And, uh, or we're we're on the south end of our district. He, the call was on the north end, and so he's like, "I bet you we can get there first. I f- bet you." Mm-hmm. He goes, "If you want to get hands on, I guarantee you we could be the first ones on the scene." And I was like, "Let's do it." So we take off. We get all the way up there, and sure, there's cops just standing around, like way out on the outside of the perimeter, <laughs> and we're the first ones to walk up to the vehicle. <laughs> and I was like, "He f- called it." I was like, "He called it." Tom Steen. What up, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's retired now, but Tom's a gangster, dude. So um, Tom and I, Tom comes up with the plan. He's like, we have, so inside this guy's garage is a guy sleeping, gangster. He's got a, a, a gun on the passenger seat. He's sleeping in the car. Tom comes up with this genius plan. He's like, all right, we got two window breakers. He's like, you break the passenger side, talking to another cop. He'll break the driver's side at the same time with the window breakers. Mm -hmm. I'll pull gunpoint on the guy from the front of the car. And then that way, if he wakes up and grabs the gun, I could just start blasting him. Mm. And so I was like, dope. That's a great plan. I was really happy with Tom's tactical capabilities. You know, so I was like, cool. So we go up and I was like, there's no way this is going to work, though. Like one of the windows isn't going to break or something. Yeah. So I'm standing. I go up to the front of the vehicle and obviously I'm not going to stand. Even though the vehicle's off, I'm not going to stand in front of the vehicle in case somehow he gets it on, turns it on and runs me over. Right. So I stand to the right of the, the front of the um, vehicle and I lean over the um, corner panel. Okay. So I'm leaning over the front of the hood with my gun pointed right at his face. Okay. And so I'm like, if he grabs his gun and points it at one of my dudes, I'm just, mur- I'm killing him. Right. Like, it's over. So I'm leaning over, and I got my gun in my face. Tom and the other cop window bash at the same time. This cop grabs the gun. Uh-huh. At the same time, Tom grabs the suspect and rips him out of the car. Okay. And Tom's an older cat, dude. He's about to retire. And, but his adrenaline kicked in. He f- ripped this guy, a full-grown man, out through the window. Wow. And hard. and while the other cop pulled the gun out, <clears throat> and I was leaning over, I had him at gunpoint. They got the gun out, so there was no need for me to do anything. Mm-hmm. It was a perfect execution. We get back to the station, and I start getting chewed out. What? Yeah, so I start getting chewed out by the sergeant because I stood in front of the vehicle, and I should never stand in front of the vehicle, and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not tactically proficient because i stood in front of the vehicle and i was like like i'm in training so i don't want to chew this this sergeant out Mm -hmm. but i want to tell a sergeant to go himself i would never stand in front of a vehicle right i i stood to the side of the vehicle and leaned over the fender and had my pistol pointed at his face first of all this is the breakdown i wanted to give him i want to be like okay okay you tactical 
cool guy. <clears throat> I was like, first of all, I'm leaning over the fender. Second of all, the vehicle's off. So he has to turn on the vehicle right. from a dead sleep and put it in drive and punch the gas all while me just deciding I was just going to stand in <laughs> front of it. on the hood. <laughs> right. And I'm just going to sit on the hood and wait for him to run me over. So I wanted to break down all this nonsense. But instead, I just had to f- sit there with my mouth shut. Mm. And in front of everybody, he didn't do this in private. Right. In front of everybody, he's telling me how stupid it is to stand in front of a vehicle. Mm. I wanted to be like, f- <laughs> <laughs> shut the f- Oh, dude. That's the beauty of it. Comment down below if you guys have had to sit in a spot where you had to eat just insane amounts of insane <laughs> quantities of shit without being able to say anything back because of that particular situation that you were in. That's, yeah. There's nothing more like blood boiling than dude. being chewed out for something where you know. I knew I was right. I knew tactically. My TO trusted what I was doing. The f- plan executed perfectly. Mm-hmm. And he just wanted input. That's what it came down to is... Because he's a good guy. I know the guy. He's a great guy. He just wanted input, and he wanted something to say. So who's he going to pick on? Right. The, the, new, the, guy. the f- new guy. <clears throat> so there's nothing I could do. I just had to listen to it. And I'm like, dude, I was special forces. Like, I've, I'm a decent cop, even as a new guy. Like, I'm tactically proficient. You know, I'm not the best. Because there definitely is transition periods when it goes from special operations to police department. Sure, yeah. It's definitely different, for I mean, sure. you're perfect when you walk into it. Yeah, right? I'm not perfect by any means, but I definitely know not to stand <laughs> in front of a vehicle. But the basics of, like, don't stand in front of a car. Right. And so the fact that he, he was just let me out, I was like, dude, I had to take it in front of everybody. And I was like, it was so hard. But anyway, there's a story for you guys. <laughs> there's one that you haven't heard very often. I know a lot oh, of you guys. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot right. of you guys talk about, you know, you hear my stories over and over. And I was like, sorry, I only have so many. <laughs> you know? Well, right, like, but for every new show, we could have new viewers, and, and they yeah. might not know that you told that story three shows ago or four episodes ago. So yeah. I always say send it, because just because you guys have heard it doesn't mean that everybody else has heard it. So it's always good to get to yeah. keep getting it out there. But I totally get that. I've not, I haven't heard that story ever. So yeah. I know that it's new for the core viewers, which are the ones we appreciate the most. Yeah. So thank you. And I'm sorry if you have to hear the same story over and over again, but it's just good for the channel to put it out there. But Yeah. And a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the cop stories... I haven't told yet, and there's a reason for that. Um, I wasn't, I haven't been disconnected from the the police department for a long time. Um, you know, a year ago, or you know, a year and a half ago, even two years ago, when we started this channel, I was still mm-hmm. in the police department uh, when we started this channel. So I just really didn't feel comfortable talking about the police department um, until I got enough disconnection to know that the cases I was, uh, you know, you know, cases I had submitted. We're not going to need to call me back. So now as the years have you know gone by, I feel more comfortable talking about them and, and being more open about my police department time. Sure. Because you guys, if you don't know, <clears throat> you could put someone in jail and you don't get a call for two years down the road and being yeah. like, hey, you're going to get subpoenaed for this. And it's like, okay. And the last thing you want to do is go out on YouTube and be talking about a, a case that hasn't been closed yet. So as time goes on and I get further separated from my, my police career, I'll be more than happy to share a lot of the stories. Um, but if you guys don't know, that's why I haven't talked about a lot of police stories. <laughs> One more thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning of this episode, which sucks that I'm mentioning it now. This is where you guys usually start skipping around and doing stuff. Um, platoon. Have you seen the movie Platoon? No. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys no. went ape during the Tropic Thunder thing because apparently, me included, even though I wasn't on camera, did not mention Platoon or the fact that that entire movie is modeled around Platoon. The that, whole movie the, is. Not, I don't know if it's the whole movie, but the, at the, the very intro least, scene. the beginning intro scene where you were comparing the music to Tears, Tears of the Sun. Of the sun it's like, yeah. Ah, 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 yeah, right? yeah. They thought you were just comparing the entire scene, so people were losing <laughs> their minds in the comment section. <laughs> They're like, "Bro, it's f- Platoon. Have you not seen Platoon?" They're like, "Oh, how do you do this backwards? How do you critique the spoof of a movie before you see the movie?" And you guys went pretty nuts. Um, safe to say, we now know it's platoon. It's platoon. So we'll watch platoon. We'll watch platoon. Yeah, yeah we'll do platoon. Uh, I, I'll make sure to get Kurt on platoon for you guys in the next batch of uh, beers and breakdowns. Like part of the order that you guys don't really know is that we put we do these in batches. So you guys are watching this now. We're gonna do another movie, another movie, another movie over the span of the next three days. So when you guys are dropping all this input under the show, 
It's a month out. Yeah, it's a lag of a month. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm watching you guys throw all these comments down, and we filmed this physically right now a month ago from now, which is, I, th I think that's how time travel works. So, yeah. Fun sh did you just Did you just Ant-Man it? I just Ant-Manned it. Yeah. But it's the most frustrating part because <laughs> when you guys correct us, I can't fix it. Like, yeah. if you guys are like, oh, in the next one, do this. It's like, we did the last, the next three a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't change anything. Can't change. And then a lot of times, we're just, we're just hashing out the comment section right now. A lot of times people are like, it just pisses me off. I'm like, you guys talk too much and don't show any of the movie. Like, mother, go watch What's the, the movie? Fucking movie. Yeah, I, dude, that's. We're not here to show you the fucking movie. I've never brought that one up, <laughs> but that one can gets me more than anything they're like oh thanks for showing 30 seconds of it and then just talking the entire time it's like did you want to watch did you think that the title said watch this movie like like clearly we're reacting to the movie you're just sitting with us and we're just gonna watch the we're movie, gonna together. Watch movie together and you like, wanted to watch it for free so you clicked on it he's like oh i'll take two dudes <laughs> sitting in the corner yeah fucking franco kind of confused by that that whole thing also i think i think what it is is like that they reveal that they're supposed to be special operations guys that, that's the only time that they even mention it i think yeah oh no and there's another scene where they they're doing background checks on them yeah and they realize that the the guy whose son is in it um and then so daryl's special ops daryl special ops, that's how he knows the main guy the main guy and then him are special ops guys so oh, no, I think no he was a cop he just used to be a cop the the, the the dirtbag brother. Aaron Paul. Yeah. He just used to be a cocky. But the other ones were SEALs together. Okay. That's why he said same as you same as you special ops do. So right. he meant the other guy, the main guy, and then Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was just a cop and he's not a cop anymore. So that that's what bothers me about this is that these are supposed to be special ops. And I hate that they throw around special ops all the time. Uh huh. Because special ops would do a way better job than that sloppy ass that they just tried to get away with. <laughs> They're getting in a gunfight in the middle of the street. They're taking uh Money that's obviously been, but the the real question is, would they though? Not would, would you? Would they? Would they what? Would former special ops guys, all of them, be more put together if there was only two of them mixed with cops, taking a bank down, be better than what we saw in that movie? It really depends on where their heads are at when they actually pull that's it true. off. Have they retained their tactical experience? Are they going down the shitter? Why are they robbing the bank in the first place? Are they being greedy? Um, you have to question the fact that they're robbing a bank, so yeah. they're already making a very reckless decision. I just think that the whole thing is just sloppy for trying to be SEALs. I think they, they should have better tactics and they look at it and then even in, in part of the movie, they look at it like, oh, these guys clearly have tactical training. And yeah. it's like, because of what? What are they doing that's so tactical? This whole thing to me is a mess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a complete Huge. show. It's, it's all so amateur um, and it's like the first time they've ever done anything tactics related mm -hmm. as far as everything plays out. I don't, there's like smart decisions like, you know, get, get rid of evidence through a gas bomb, disguising your voice, uh, you know, taping up your hands. Preparation wise, there's a lot of intelligent things that they did, but execution wise, it's a complete. You know, not to mention my opinion of the whole thing. <clears throat> this is my one hole in the whole movie plot that gets me is they they have his son now from what i can tell there's no one other than the wife which is kate winslet a couple of henchmen and an organization which i assume exists that i never saw right so mm -hmm. there's just the people that drive her around their security that's it so if you're doing all of this just to get your son and to leave the life right which is what the main guy i assume is doing he's just trying to please her so he can get a son but he gets visitation so he can leave, take that tactical experience, use his friend, Daryl, who's also special ops, and then let's just run security until we kill them. There's yeah. like four of them, right? You just took an entire bank down. You got in a shootout with the police force. You're telling me you can't take on four or five henchmen that these Russians supposedly have right. to get your son out? Just, just kill them. If you're going to put all that effort and almost die anyway, you might as well just go against them. Yeah, I would, I would 100% rather go up against any gangster organization than the government. Then rob 
a bank and then break into the Homeland Security building. <laughs> right. It's like, I could do either those two or I could just fight you. And from what I can tell, you've got like six, four to six people that work for you right. that aren't trained. So we could just all get in a gunfight once. Yeah, and then let's, I mean, in all honesty, what would you rather go up against? Man, you guys could, could comment down below. What would you think would be an easier fight? Let's say you take a, a big organization. Let's call it, just for the sake of calling it, the cartel. Sure. So you have the cartel or the U.S. government. Well, obviously the cartel, right? There's less people. They're not as trained. I, don't, I just thought the numbers don't match up, right? I right. imagine the U.S. government, they'll just keep throwing people at you until they win. Over and over and over right. and over. And the intelligence, the intelligence that will come from the U.S. government will be so overwhelming. Yeah. You're going to lose. They're going to tap your cell phones. They're going to trace your vehicles. They're going to have spies on you. Yeah. They're going to have drone covering you. You're not going to be able to move anywhere in the world. Uh, yes, the cartel would be more violent once they get their hands on you. Yeah. But they don't have the resources that the U.S. government could have. So it would just be an astronomical, uh, astronomically difficult thing to evade the U.S. compared to someone who's more violent but has less reach. Mm -hmm. So if you're escaping the cartel, you move to some foreign country, I would feel pretty safe. But if you're escaping the U.S. government and you move to a foreign country, it's only a matter of time before they pick a ping a phone ping a conversation and they're all over you like white on rice yeah i just imagine the resources is wider and they have more trained people and it's just it's obviously the reasons compound but which supports just, your argument that it would be better to go after them just go after them or get in get in one <coughs> shootout instead of like two shootouts with the entire city's force on you right you know it just seems like a no-brainer two chains yeah is that what it is yeah i don't listen to, to the beats yeah, that's two chains. Come on down. Come on, baby, I got a Damn. How the f you got up there? All right, come on over here, boy. Yo, this scene was so pointless. <laughs> He's riding in the car. He's obviously trying to do a training day scene. Right. They're trying to show. Falcon, the Falcon, the future Captain America yeah. as being training day. Like, bitch, I didn't buy you as training day for one hot damn second. They took that one scene and tried to build uh, like character development that he's yeah. like known in the streets and that he runs like as a cop. He runs that area. Right. They listen to him. Yeah. You know, he's all, get your damn. ass down. She was she's like, ah, like, oh, man. Damn. Like, I got to get down because he said. Cause, yeah, because he said. Because all the other cops she, are telling her to get down. She's like, fuck you. I'm going to dance on the trash can. First of all, who gives a shit? If she's up there <laughs> dancing on the trash can. Nobody You're going to have five cops show up to tell her to get off the trash can. Do you, know, do you know what that smelled like? Do you know what she smelled like dancing up on that trash can in the middle of the day? When's the last time she took a shower? No one's going to stop and be like, No one cares. There. Yeah, who gives a So the whole like riding in the car with your new partner, the white guy, it, and then all of a sudden you show up and you're telling her to get down or she listens to you. And then it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. The scene literally doesn't go anywhere. So it was completely a training day plug to mm -hmm. try and give him street cred street as cred. this gangster yeah. cop. And then they do it again when he pulls him off to the side and locks the door in the in the gas station. Right. And he tries to yell at him like, you don't know what you are. And he's wearing a gang unit jacket on. And his, his entire character arc in this movie was weird because then he just ends up getting shot. So it was like, I think they were trying to do the, you've seen the movie The Departed? Yeah. They were trying to do one of those numbers where it's like, you've been building up this character, building up this character, and then he's like, doof. And then he's just dead. So he's not part of the end, basically. Yeah. Like, he doesn't see it through. Which is kind of dumb. So you take all this character development, it's be, and you just kill him off. Yeah. But there's no actual impact. Like, if you watch The Departed, that elevator opens up and then Leonardo DiCaprio the th the guy this entire movie has been about dies instantly and you're just like oh f yeah they just killed the entire reason I was watching this movie it was impactful that held no impact no. when he got shot no and you're putting the falcon in as this gangster and i get it the falcon came after but he's clearly like captain america yeah like i buy this this actor as captain america all day long he's the other captain america his suits stupid his suit sucks 
Ugh. Hopefully, he, I I wish he would just be Captain America, wear Captain America suit. I think he's a great replacement for Captain America. But he's a good old boy. You you get nothing but like, like college athlete fucking star yeah. quarterback <laughs> vibes from this guy, and he's trying to play this training day vibe, and I'm not buying up minute of it. Mm-hmm. Like Denzel Washington could pull his ass into the hood and he would get shot and jumped immediately. <laughs> like Denzel would be up there just smashing that hot Hispanic chick and he would be getting jumped in the street like a white boy. Eva Mendez. Because he is not scary at all. So epic fail on your training day attempt. Mm. Agreed. Okay, so before we say anything, because if I if I caught it, obviously you guys caught it, because I don't. I'm, what do you think you should have done in that moment? Do you think you should have started breathing really hard and then gone for the hands, or do you think maybe you should have just fingered the hole in your mouth from the cheap supermarket plastic bag and gone like this and gone, or you could just die. Yeah, that's fun too. I don't get it. This is like the second movie, at least the second movie, if not the third, where somebody's been getting choked out with a plastic bag and their hands are free. If your hands are tied, I get it. Right. Your hands are tied to the thing and then you get plastic bag that sucks. I would still try to like suck it into my mouth and chew on it. Try something. something. Yeah. But your hands are free, Daryl. <laughs> You've killed hundreds of walkers. At least hundreds. The, at least the one in the what was it, the um, bullet train. At least that one, it seemed like to be a very thick plastic, like, uh, whatever. It's made out of something other than just that cheap supermarket. This was, se- like, cheap supermarket It's a plastic. supermarket plastic bag. Dude, just one finger just... Yeah, he like, could have just popped a hole in his mouth and ripped it open and turned then around, laughed at fighting. the guy. Yeah. yeah. Instead, he just dies. He's just like, no. Does that really fucking make no. you wonder who the fuck was in the room when they filmed that and was no one looking at it going like... Well, why... Like, is it, is it, did, were they just Ooh. afraid of the director? <laughs> did they just not want to say anything? Was was, uh. was Norman Reedus like? I mean, I feel like I could. I mean, I can get through this, but like, what what like, happened there? No, Daryl, you cannot get through. this. How did that make it from conception to product? Right. Like, how did that go from beginning to end with no one saying? You guys don't want to get like a thick plastic bag? Somebody go to Home Depot and get a thick plastic bag. Like, you can't. Please don't call him Norman. Is that not his name? No, it's Daryl. Is Daryl his name in the show? Huh? In this show? In real life? Daryl? Daryl? Yeah. That's his real name? Yeah. Oh, it's not Norman Reedus? No, it's Daryl. Are you fucking with me? I mean, no. Are you choosing to call him Daryl because that's his name in The Walking Dead? Yeah. Oh, so his name is Norman Reedus? No, it's Daryl. You guys let me know if that's his real name. I'll call him Daryl if you want me to. I just don't know which one's real. No, no, it's Daryl. You're confusing me. Daryl. Daryl. Yeah. I'll call him Daryl. Well, Daryl needs to finger his mouth. Right. To live. He's killed hundreds of walkers. He can't finger his own mouth. <laughs> Dude, so many. So many walkers. So far you've come. Check that closet. Clear. Couch on the left, stairs on the right. Stop it. Moving. Check that couch. Check Cover. Couch. Cover. Cover. Moving up. All right, so here I'm I'm blown away. By this tactical approach. Okay. What do you think about it? When I watch that entire scene, because it, it goes on from here, but he does that basically throughout the entire rest of the house, and they find out that they're all connected, and he goes, I thought it was I thought it was really good. I thought it was great. Like, if I was going to try and run through a house in my fictional world where I'm in tactics, having that shield up, constantly calling things out, directing from the person that's in front, mm-hmm. leading, um, I thought that was great. I, I, I loved it. It's a tactic. The crazy thing is a tactic that's not use that often at least i haven't seen it on the police department in special operations the issue is the shields are so rare Mm -hmm. we have shields in the police department but there's like let's say there's like three per uh district so you have to plan on who's going to have a shield so not every officer has a shield then you have to call for the shield so typically you're not going to get a shield unless it's a barricaded suspect which we we have used we had a barricaded suspect that we know were armed we call for the shield, the shield sets up in the hallway, and then we post up behind the shield um, as cover with our rifles 
or with your pistol, you have that shield for cover. Mm -hmm. Shields are great tools, but what he did in the scene and the way that he called out spots to be checked, he's running the scene as the point man. And why is that? Is it because he's in charge? No, it's not anything like that. It's because he has the visual through the shield. He's the one that's taking all the risk by holding the shield and taking bullets in it. Right. Because he could still get shot in the legs. He could still lower it too much and get shot in the head. He's taking all the risk. So he's the first one that's seeing everything in the room. So he's calling out, hey, I got this coming up to my left. So the guys in the back, before they see it, they know, okay, I got a closet coming up to my left. Right. That way, by the time they get to it, they can move up, clear the closet, get back in line of the shield. It's a tactic. It's not perfect for every situation, but it's a specific tactic that can be used is to have a shield guy, everyone else's ducks in a row, and then they branch off to go clear and then come back to ducks in a row. Okay. I think it's a really, really solid tactic that could be used more often or could be used or just has its place and should always be considered if you have time to collect your shield, you know it's going to be um, – you know, a high value target or a, a, a high likelihood that you're going to be in contact. Right. So I thought that was a, a really great scene. I don't know if he had what kind of advisor they had on this, if it was a SWAT team or whatever, but the way he flowed and called, he's not being a, hey, do this and you do this. He's not over commanding. Mm -hmm. He's just saying, I got a couch to my left. Clear that. Roger that. Check. It's clear. All right. Move in. So that way, once it's clear, he knows to keep moving right. so he doesn't move too fast. Right. I was actually, like, really impressed by the tactics of that clear. Yeah, I thought it was a good scene. I don't know anything yeah. about tactics, and I was like, that that seems like something that would work. Yeah. To it, me. Anyway. But. And that's all tactics is. Will it work? Yeah. Or is it stupid? Yeah. Because you could do stupid and be like, well, <laughs> I was just using speed as my cover because they can't shoot me as fast. You know, you hear that time chasing the rabbit where you'll have them like you'll do your one and two man and one man sprinting as fast as he can so that way it makes it harder to hit and they start chasing the rabbit and then two man could come in and shoot them mm -hmm. i don't like that i think that's stupid is there a place that that's worked has it worked it has no you know every situation is different but i thought that was a really good tactic nice i thought so too no. with my years of tactical experience well, sometimes tactics is just common sense. Yeah, I don't have any of that either. So <laughs> it's like there's there's bullets coming. Sometimes I'm like, oh, what's the best yeah. way to avoid getting hit by them? That's tactics. Mm. Someone, someone has a police officer's weapon. They they need to be put down and shooting him in the head. That's fair game. Yeah. If you grab a fellow officer's gun and you're fighting for their gun, you're getting shot in the head. Yeah. And coming up and getting close range to make sure that there's no collateral damage. Yeah. Uh, it was the perfect way to do it. So that scene, flawless. I also like the way he he didn't like run in and do the the headshot headshot. You yeah. know scenario he just he stayed back for a minute made the decision and then ran as fast as he could and then shot as soon as he got there yeah so there was no there was no um chance for him to miss he wasn't sitting back here just trying to be like a marksman when they're moving around which right. we all know is going to be really difficult exactly he just made the decision you see him sprint and as soon as he gets to his head he pulls because yeah. he's like right there so at first he's trying to take in the situation mm -hmm. he's confused he's like what the happening is who's winning this fight is there even a fight right and then once he understands what's going on he runs up bop puts him down it was perfect. Another thing is getting in foot chases in the projects. I've been in foot chases in the projects, and it sucks because for multiple reasons. One, just like that guy slid through the fence, Yeah, they know their projects. They know where they live. Mm -hmm. So they know how to get around as quickly as possible. Another thing is I've been in foot chases in the projects where uh, a lot of times in the projects, people leave their doors wide open with just their screen doors closed right. um, for fresh air, you know, and because – just to hang out, whatever, fresh air. But 
that makes a freedom of movement for the bad guys, for the people that are trying to evade, that live in the projects and are escaping through. They'll run through random people's houses. Right. And it's they're, the people are perfectly okay with that. They, they don't even, like, get jarred by it. Right. So, like, I've had suspects just run into someone's house, run through the front, run right out the back, and take off. And then the homeowner's like, I don't know. They're like, yeah. They're like, I don't know. I don't know where a guy went. I don't know. No one came through here. You must be mistaken. It's like, I watched him run into your house. <laughs> like, you don't know who that is? They're like, nope. I don't know what you're talking about. So they have these networks of, you know, avenues to escape police and it's like you have this huge building if there's a, a doorway through someone's house you run through it i have to go all the way around the building yeah. by the time i get to the other side of the projects you're f gone so it's just it, it's so easy for them to escape in the projects like that's their home they they and they allow each other to do it mm -hmm. so it's super difficult to get into a foot chase and catch somebody running through the projects if you've never experienced projects in a city before, oof, go hang out there for a day. <laughs> Check it out, and then uh, you'll see what it's like. It's it's tough. It's a, a hard environment to live in. So for the people that choose to stay there and choose to, like, kind of accept that environment as their mm -hmm. new normal, that's on them. Unfortunately, for the kids and the next generations that don't have that choice, it's it's a hard life to live Man, man, the projects is, it's just not fun. You got, you know, dumpsters lining the streets, constantly packed full of trash because everyone is, is dumping their trash in these dumpsters. They never get like emptied on time. So it's just, it's just a mess all the time. Anyway, living in the projects would be a tough life. And it's supposed to be transitionary. It's not supposed to be a permanent residence, mm -hmm. you know, but a lot of people make the projects a permanent residence. Jeff, did you get a dispatch? Yeah, sure or not. It's Chris. Let's go! Lock down the scene! Clint, get Toby! Head door! So a couple of things there, the shotgun taser rounds. Yeah, totally unknown. Taser face. <laughs> Taser, Taser face. face. Wait a minute. Your name's Taser face? I never heard of shotgun Taser rounds. If I'm not was, saying they don't exist. It before me, man. I don't know. But, I mean, seems cool. I just, even with the even with the Taser rounds, which don't I don't think exist, but uh, you guys will tell us. But I like the fact that they built up this proficient group that can clear rooms and take people out proficiently, zip tie and move on. Why not just go against the Russians and go do that in one building, take your kid and be gone? Like yeah. Homeland Security, really? You yeah. got a better shot at doing that than just going and getting your kid from this blonde. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. She's got two guys around her. The one yeah. dude, whoever he is, that's always in the in the the scenes as like her bodyguard, her head. Security guy, just infiltrate that if you yeah, can do shoot that, them with your taser shotgun rounds. Don't even use a taser this time, just use an actual bullet and just start <laughs> taking people out. And then, like, you're gonna kill number four and be like, Oh, shit, that was it. Yeah, be like, Let's go, <laughs> let's get out of here. We're done, we're done. Go put your son in safety and then go back to a place where you think they're gonna show back up to kill you and then murk them again, John Wick style. It's like, Oh. I didn't have to kill 17 cops, infiltrate the Department of Homeland Security. Yeah, that's a good point. Just, that, that's a that's like a really good point because it like just destroys the whole plot of this movie. It's what they're doing is so much more difficult than what we would, he would actually have to do. And then what do they do that. next? Now they set these guys up with C4 bombs to their heads, to yeah. their heads, in order to coerce them into giving them access. Yeah, and then they put one on one guy's ankle and then blow his ankle off. So you're capable of all this. Yeah. But you can't take out a few to get your kid back. Yeah, that's a really good point, man. And, it, and, and, and I would get it if they built if they if they did the character development a little more for uh the bad guys, the villain in this, yeah. which is Vasily, who's locked up somewhere. His wife is running everything. But they never give us any reason to believe that they're more dangerous than we've seen. Like there's yeah. they they don't do anything. She's clearly contracting them to do their bidding, so they don't have henchmen of their own to go take care of these things. You are the tactical guys. You are it. Now, if I was that mob boss, I'd be like, 
dude, I'm holding your kid. You guys mm. are capable of doing everything I tell you to do. I can't imagine if you didn't like me, right? Like, what if you come after me? Yeah. I'd be done. I only got like four dudes here. Like, but for some reason, it's just, it's such a big plot hole. It makes me think that it's all That cool. is a big, big plot hole. That's a good point. And then I, I don't know if that amount of C4, like that seems like a lot of C4. I've been on the wrong end of too much C4, mm-hmm. uh, especially when we've had EOD guys, uh, Travis's junior, put too much C4 on some um, some rounds. Uh-huh. That we were trying to get disposed of, and, and when it went off, did it rock my f- brain? <laughs> so like too much C four is a really really bad thing. So you gotta be careful about how much C four you use, and you gotta be like, I get it, it's a movie, and they, they like everything we say is, is a movie, so it doesn't matter. But you really want to be careful about how much C four you use, minimum safe distances, and then the effect of that. If you're strapping C four to someone's head, mm-hmm. I mean, a probably like a quarter size C4 with a blasting cap in it. The blasting cap is still an explosive itself, you know, and then it's just the blasting cap is what ignites the C4. So you have a blasting cap, which is already a minor explosion, which that tape to your head could kill you on its own. Mm-hmm. And then you're plugging it into a C4. They're using like a golf ball or like a baseball size of C4. I'm pretty sure that would explode you the entire person. <laughs> let alone just knock their dome piece off. Right. I just hate when they always use an excessive amount of uh, explosives yeah. to do the job because it just makes it look ridiculous if you have any experience uh, blowing C4. But I could be wrong, but I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. But it really is funny to think that, like, all the effort they put into doing all this right. against the U.S. government, it's like there really is, like, four dudes and one guy sitting in jail. Yeah, that's it. It's like you can kill them, and you're right. I didn't think about that either. They're clearly not that ha, – don't have that much manpower that they're having to contract you in the first place. Right, so you're clearly tactically superior. Yeah. It's like they need you. Without you, they can't get these things done. She needs them to get the intelligence to get ah, him out. I didn't think about Why that. Why wouldn't you just turn it on them and be like, listen, we're clearly better than them. We'll let's just around, all of let's, you. Let's put all of this manpower into taking that. Let's get a blueprint of the building. Let's get an entry point. Let's get an exfil – you know, plan out. Let's get the kid. Kill everyone, especially that. Over. Clearly, obviously, then the movie would just be over. I'm just just throwing <laughs> it out there, food for thought. Now, Could I get be a better movie though. I get without that, there would be no movie. But just saying. Seems extreme. This part gets me. So he wants to be a d- so he fires the round, the gun off by his ear, and it's just like ring numbing, ah, big horrible thing that just happened by your ear. But then every other time in the movie, they're firing off rounds without ear pro, without any f- I'm issue like, if whatsoever. I fire a gun, it's only this far from me. Right. So You're firing it here? Firing it here would or here. blow out my eardrum to the point to where it bled. Seems a little extreme. Right. It's ridiculous. It's like, listen, it's always going to be loud. It's an explosion going off in that gun. It's always going to be loud. You don't want to shoot firearms without ear protection. It's loud. It's going to make your ears ring. So they're just always like, da, 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 da. And then the minute they want you to pay for it, they go, Ta, and you go, ring, and they go, ha, 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 ha. It's loud, isn't it? <laughs> You're deaf. Ta, <laughs> no more hearing for you. Ta, like, come on, man. Yeah. You can't just pick and choose when it's loud. You've been shooting guns this whole movie without, like, their BB guns. And now all of a sudden it's like, ha, 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 ha. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. If you've made it this far... You're committed. You're one of our people. So go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop a comment down below, say anything you want. Maybe just hit middle fingers, Wakanda forever, whatever you guys want to do, whatever emoji you want. Notification bell. Hit the notification bell so you know when our next video drops. We got more videos dropping with Dr. Burkhart to help you guys 
increase your chances of getting selected and work on your physical fitness training right now those videos aren't doing so hot which is mind-blowing because we have so much expertise in that video so much knowledge and experience and training uh, and education going into helping you guys so if you can please check those videos out hit the like button they're here somewhere yeah pop it there up. go check, check them out. out we're gonna drop some more this week because at the end of the day we are dedicated to helping you guys get selected and we promise you nobody is doing more to help you get selected than the fng academy see you guys on the next one peace